Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Haley Zinda, and I'm currently a master's student at The Ohio State University. Today, I'll be presenting Exploring the Effects of Lowered Dietary Cation Anion Difference on Digestibility and Manure Characteristics of Lactating Dairy Cows. Let's start off with the dietary cation anion difference, or DCAD, as I'll refer to it from here on out. And it is the balance of positively and negatively charged ions within the diet. The first of which will be a negative DCAD diet, which will contain more anions and is typically fed to dry non-lactating dairy cows about three weeks before they calve. And this is to reduce their risk of milk fever at calving. And this is done through inducing a state of compensated metabolic acidosis which will slightly reduce blood pH and in turn will reduce urine pH. When that cow calves, she'll be switched to a positive DCAD diet or a diet that will contain more cations. And while any DCAD greater than zero milliequivalents per kilogram of dry matter is positive, a typical range for a lactating cow will be about 150 to 350 to meet her requirements. And there is some evidence that shows increasing DCAD beyond this uh, can improve production parameters such as dry matter intake, milk yield, fat yield, and fiber digestibility, which suggests that perhaps decreasing DCAD will have the opposing effect. But what about this range in the zero to 100? Uh, we've talked about negative DCAD and a typical lactating DCAD. And there are several studies as shown here that have illustrated no differences in any sort of production parameter in this DCAD range with the addition of reducing the urine pH, which will be essential to my research here. And that is going to be tying in manure ammonia emissions with DCAD. So the pKa of ammonia is about nine, meaning that in an aqueous solution, uh, at a pH of nine, 50% of the ammonia will be in the ammonia form and 50% will be in the ammonium form. Tying that in the DCAD, the pH of urine from a positive DCAD fed cow will be about eight and a half, whereas the urine pH from a negative DCAD fed cow will be about 6.2 to 6.8. Fecal pH will be in that same range. And so mixing those two together to form a manure slurry pH of less than seven uh, is potentially enough to show a significant reduction in manure ammonia emissions. So that's where this research aims to go. With the hypothesis that urine and manure pH will decrease in a quadratic manner with decreasing DCAD when fed a reduced DCAD diet. Uh, Further, the decrease in urine pH will reduce manure ammonia emissions. The objective of this abstract presentation then is to determine the effect of DCAD on fiber digestibility, manure characteristics, and manure ammonia emissions. For this study, I was able to use 27 mid-lactation cows that were about 95 days in milk and producing about 45 kilograms of milk per day. They were randomly assigned to one of three treatments in a randomized complete block design. The first treatment being a control with a typical lactating DCAD of about 192 milliequivalents per kilogram of dry matter, the mid with 101 and low with 1.2 milliequivalents per kilogram of dry matter. They were blocked by parity and days in milk and kept on trial for seven weeks, including one week of covariate and six weeks of data collection. Data were run in SAS 9.4 using a mixed procedure, linear and quadratic polynomial orthogonal contrasts were performed using block as the random effect and treatment time and time treatment interactions as fixed effects. Here's a quick snapshot of our diet where you can see that corn silage is the base of all diets at about 53% dry matter basis. Alfalfa silage is going to be the secondary forage at about 7%, making the forage concentrate ratio in the diet 60-40. In the red box, you can see that MEG anion is the commercial anionic salt used for this trial, was included at increasing 
concentrations in the diet to further decrease the decad. Because mag anion contained ammonium chloride, which is a source of mad protein nitrogen, urea was used in the control diet and subsequently removed in mid and low to create isonitrogenous diets. Moving on to lab procedures, feeds and feces were examined for chemical composition and digestibility. And then secondary samples of feces and urine were collected and retained for manure incubation later on. As you can see here, uh, these are our manure incubation setup. And at the start, we measured feces, urine, and manure pHs, as well as dry matter and organic matter of the manure. And then after the six-day incubation, we measure manure pH again. Before I talk about any of this digestibility data, I want to mention that intake of dry matter, organic matter, neutral detergent fiber, and crude protein were not differing among the diets. And then looking at the digestibility here, you can see that, again, there were no differences for dry matter, organic matter, or NDF. However, crude protein tended to decrease with decreasing decad. The lack of difference among dry matter and NDF digestibilities uh, were not in accordance with several meta-analyses, however, was similar to several original research publications in which they report similar results uh, with similar DCAD. Perhaps the DCAD was not a great enough difference in this trial, or perhaps it was a masking effect of linoleic acid. All cows had some level of milk fat depression, which we attributed to a large unexpected concentration of LA within the diet. And in previous studies in our lab, we did see that LA was able to mask the effect of DCAD uh, on digestibility parameters. And then lastly, the crude protein trend uh, was decreased potentially because of numerical uh, decrease of crude protein or nitrogen intake. And excretion characteristics include our feces pH, which was not differing among treatments as to be expected. Uh, and you can see that our urine pH was successfully decreased from about 8.6 down to 6.72. And keep in mind that this pH was taken immediately before incubation. Whereas if you were to look at the urine pH uh, at spot sampling before it was frozen and again thawed, it was at 6.4. So there was a 0.3 pH unit increase. But however, that low urine pH was able to reduce the manure pH for low, the low seven, which was going to be ideal for potential decreased manure ammonia emissions. Uh, however, you can see that after the six day incubation, manure pH was no longer decreased for low, um, which we'll talk about here in a bit. And urine, P, uh, urine output, excuse me, was increased quadratically uh, for control and low. And we attributed this to increased fractions of chloride within the diet, which can also increase water intake and urine output, just like sodium and potassium can. And looking at some of the manure emission results, uh, we have ammonia in grams per cow along the y-axis and our day of incubation along the x-axis. Our top dot line here will be our control, and then the dashed is the mid, and solid line is the low. Only for day one was there a significant linear decrease in manure ammonia with decreasing decad, and the rest of the days were similar to one another. Therefore, instead of a cumulative uh, reduction of manure ammonia emission, we only saw a softening of the peak of manure law, ammonia loss. But why did we not see a lack of, or why did we not see a statistical difference, even though the manure pH was within a range that should have reduced manure ammonia loss by more than 15%? And uh, there are several reasons as to why, the first of which being the fecal to urine ratio uh, on average was greater than two to one. And an average lactating Holstein cow will produce two parts of feces to one part urine on average. 
uh, this, so this increase of feces or decrease of urine will increase the amount of organic buffers to counteract the reduction of urine pH, as well as contribute a greater amount of bacterial urease uh, to form ammonia for volatilization. Secondly, the urine pH was increased after storage um, and it has its own buffering capacity. So we attributed this to a loss of carbon dioxide, which is not unlike uh, studies that have shown the same effect in human urine by increasing up by about 0.5 pH units after the same storage technique. And then lastly, manure was quite variable between cows. Uh, and so that means chances are chemical composition of manure was also quite variable. Uh, with the range from 54 to 101 kilograms, there will be varying amounts of urine and feces in each of those. But the conclusions we can draw from this study is that DCAD did not affect digestibility as expected, but likely because of the confounding factor of linoleic acid. Uh, secondly, urine pH remains quite influenced by DCAD, but it, urine output is also altered with the inclusion of chloride rather than just sodium or potassium. And then lastly, the manure ammonia loss may be reduced further with a smaller fecal to urine ratio, uh, but we would need to work out with more research on what the ideal fecal to urine ratio might be and how much that a manure ammonia loss would actually come out to be. But with that, I thank you for listening and I look forward to all of your questions on April 19th. Thanks.